The Boomer Shooter, an older generation of first-person shooter. These FPS games were made with a different design philosophy that focused more on exploration and movement. These types of FPS games saw a decline in popularity since the release of the original Half-Life, which favored more linear progression. However, recently this genre has been seeing a resurgence in popularity since the release of Doom 2016. The increased popularity of boomer shooters has led to the creation of new games in the genre. Among this new wave of boomer shooters are three games that kicked off this revival, those games being Dusk, Amid Evil, and Ion Fury. You're terrible. All three of these games are fantastic in their own right, and really stand apart as their own experiences. However, some of the games in the genre have gone under the radar for one reason or another. So I think it's time to shed some light on these underlooked titles. There's this one called Head On that I've heard of, but I don't know a ton about it. I wonder how it is. Well, it looks like we're in for a fun ride. With all of that said, welcome to Head On. Head On, yes it's pronounced Head On, is a game that was released in May of 2019. It started its life as a total conversion for Doom 2, but later became a standalone game due to the developer, Zan, wanting to expand on the game. We've seen examples like this before, most notably with Black Mesa, a fan redesign of the original Half-Life in the Source engine. Speaking of game engines, let's go over the technical aspects of the game. Head On runs in a modified version of GZ Doom which mostly differs in stripping away unnecessary options in the menus. This only became an issue when I wanted to turn on Auto Run, which I was able to do by pressing the Caps Lock key. You still get the important features of GZ Doom, like modern resolutions and frame rates, and 3D audio by turning HRTF on. The game is pretty dark, to the point where it inhibits visibility, so I recommend increasing the gamma correction a little to help counteract that. The game has six difficulty modes total, with Greenhorn being the easiest and Brutalizing being the hardest. Then there's Berserk, which I'll talk about later. I personally recommend playing on head-on difficulty for a first-time playthrough. For this review, I did two full playthroughs, one on head-on Nistic, and one on Berserk. The game recently got an update which significantly altered the starting level, so I also ended up playing that level on head-on Nistic. Now with all of that out of the way, let us dive head-first into head-on. <sighs> The game starts with the main character being ambushed by a demon. After slaying the beast, you then exit into a hellish landscape. You do some simple platforming and exploration in order to blow open a massive gate. You enter the gates, expecting to fight like hell. <sighs> but it was just a flashback, as you suddenly wake up in a cave. Armed with nothing but your fists, you're then left to explore the area around you. You play the game as Zan, a half-demon, half-orc warrior that shares their name with the developer Zan. So from this point onward, I'm going to refer to the main character as Zan, and the developer as the developer, just to make things less confusing. The game has some pretty involved lore and story, if you're willing to give the material a read, which helped develop the massive world that Zan inhabits. The scale of the world is complemented nicely by the impressively sized maps. There are only 10 maps in the game, but each of the maps are gigantic in size, taking around 30 minutes per map for a first time playthrough. Even more impressive is the amount of detail shown in each of the maps. It's not Ion Fury levels of detail, but it's definitely a close second. Some of the maps have simple puzzles that you need to solve in order to progress. Usually this revolves around collecting materials in order to create new items, which then can be used to open up new areas of the map. Sometimes it involves finding secret panels to push that will open up new sections. This only became an issue for me in one map, where I had to search for a specific book among many bookshelves in order to progress. Other than that, none of the puzzles ever got in the way of my enjoyment of the maps, which facilitate fun and intense combat. 
The maps are open enough to allow for movement, often utilizing verticality to add depth to the combat, but they have enough obstacles and details in them to give a level of challenge to the world. All of these aspects combined help the maps feel alive, which is complemented by Head-On's excellent soundtrack. Head-On is unique in the fact that it has multiple different styles of music by different groups and composers. The main artist for Head-On's soundtrack is Axul, who does the calm and ambient metal tracks. Then you have Breathe Last, who is responsible for the more energetic metal tracks. Then you have Methadone Skies, who is responsible for two of the tracks in the middle section of the game. Then you get music from one of my favorite musicians of all time, Alexander Brandon. His tracks and head-on are similar to his work in Unreal and Deus Ex, and they are all amazing. Xenofish also does a track, which I'll show later. All these tracks come together to give Head-On a unique blend of metal and electronic music, which helps complement the combat perfectly. Firstly, let's look at the weapon lineup. You have the axe, an automatic rifle, a shotgun flamethrower hybrid, an explosive launching crossbow, a vial launcher that shoots multiple types of flasks, and a hitscan lance with a BFG-like alt fire. There's also a claw that shoots out plasma balls, but it's only in the first level at the moment, so there's not a lot to say about it. Xan also has access to a quick kick that can be used to kick enemies off cliffs. My personal favorite weapon has to be the axe. It tears up enemies and can be thrown to deal a lot of damage. <laughs> All of the weapons serve their purpose well and make combat with the enemies enjoyable. Speaking of which, let's talk about the enemies. I'm going to split the enemies up into a couple of categories. First you have the basic enemies, which mostly exist as cannon fodder. All of them have a basic attack that doesn't deal too much damage and are pretty easy to dodge. Then you have the advanced enemies, which serve as a threat whenever they appear. They stand apart from the basic enemies for having higher health pools and special abilities that they use against you. Then you have the two bosses, which provide a fun challenge when they appear. Out of all of these enemies, there are only three that I dislike. Firstly are the Iron Urchins, little fiery spike balls that will quickly rush towards you before blowing up in your face. Then you have Forge Elementals, big fiery balls that will shoot explosive projectiles at you. They also spawn Iron Urchins, which makes them the single worst enemies to deal with in the game. Lastly, you have the Golems. Remember the Black Ops enemies from Half-Life? Well, imagine having to deal with those while using projectile weapons. Even with the hit scan lance, they're still a pain to deal with, as they jump around throwing shards at you. These three enemies are not fun to fight against, and are easily the worst part about head-on. There's also this one other enemy, but they currently only appear at the beginning of the game, so there isn't a lot to say about them. Overall, the enemies help make the combat feel engaging and fun, despite the few bad apples in the mix. The last thing to note about the combat are the items. In head-on, you have an inventory system where you can select and use power-ups. These range from health regeneration, damage reduction, increasing the rate of fire, and so on. There are two notable power-ups in the game. One of them is the Time Shard, which stops the flow of time for a short while. This allows you to deal a lot of damage safely, and watch groups of enemies explode in spectacular fashion. The other is the Sentry Gun, which deploys a portable sentry unit that fires at enemies. It can be picked up and repositioned, and is great at assisting you in combat. The items help augment the combat through the entire game, and fill out Xan's arsenal perfectly. 
The last thing to note mechanically is that there are friendly NPCs in the game. They function identically to the Brutal Doom friendly marines, as they both use a friendly Brutal AI. You encounter them at the end of the game, where Zan and her allies storm the enemy forces as all hell breaks loose. After a fight with the final boss, the game ends somewhat anticlimactically, hinting at a second episode which hasn't been released yet. The game itself is pretty fun on the surface, but I haven't even shown you my favorite part of Head On. Remember the Berserk difficulty that I mentioned earlier? Well, this difficulty replaces all of the ranged weapons with new melee weapons, and it is awesome. Initially, you start out with a hatchet and shield, which kinda sucks. It can deflect projectiles, but I never used it once I got some of the better weapons. The axe returns for Berserk mode, but it quickly gets outclassed by the fire hammer. It mostly functions the same as the axe, except it gives you lava immunity, and explodes when struck. I mostly used it against Forge Elementals, as the next two weapons outclass the rest by far. First you have the Force Pike, a spear that has the longest melee reach in the game. My favorite part about it is the alternate fire, which pulls enemies towards you, encouraging some intense bloodbaths. Terrible. It's also amazing at dealing with iron urchins, as the pull will cause them to explode on contact with the surface. But the best weapon in the game, by far, is the Great Axe. A massive axe with the widest swing radius in the game. This pales when compared to the alt fire, which launches you forward before swinging the axe 360 degrees around you, decimating everything it hits. The alt fire can also be used to shred the health of bosses, trivializing them. These weapons all come together to make Berserk amazing to play. In fact, I think I might like it better than the base game. The difficulty even changes some of the enemy behaviors, like Forge Elementals don't spawn Iron Urchins anymore, and enemies dropping health instead of ammo. These changes encourage a much more aggressive, and ultimately more fun playstyle than what the base game has to offer. Berserk mode alone is worth head-on's asking price of $10. This feels like a love letter to the FPS games of old, and chatting a bit with the developer confirms this to me. The game will be receiving more updates in the future, such as the second episode. All of this is great value for the $10 you'll spend on the game. While Head On might not be the most well-known boomer shooter, it is one that is absolutely worth your time. Boomer to the core indeed. Before I go, I want to make a quick announcement. I'm opening up a Discord server for anyone who is interested in my content. Currently, it will be for fans to chat about stuff, but I'm looking to host server events in the future once that becomes more plausible. These events would mostly consist of game nights for various arena shooters, and sometimes other games such as Halo Reach on PC. I'll also be posting announcements for any new videos uploaded, given that YouTube does a less than stellar job at notifying subscribers. The link will be down in the description box below if you're interested in joining. That's all I have to say about that, and I hope to see you there. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.